Surah 22, Al-Hajj, the Pilgrimage In the name of Allah, the Most Merciful, the Most Compassionate O mankind, fear the wrath of your Lord. Indeed, the earthquake of the hour of judgment will be an awesome thing. On the day when you witness it, the suckling woman shall utterly neglect the infant she suckles, and every pregnant woman shall cast her burden, and you will see people as though they are drunk when they are not drunk, but dreadful shall be Allah's chastisement. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يُجَادِلُ فِي اللَّهِ بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ وَيَتَّبِعُ كُلَّ شَيْطَانٍ مَرِيدٍ Among people there are some who wrangle about Allah without knowledge and follow every rebellious devil. Although it is decreed about him that he shall lead into error whosoever takes him for a friend and will direct him to the torment of the fire. O mankind! If you have any doubt concerning resurrection, then know that it is surely we who created you from dust, then from a drop of sperm, then from a clot of blood, then from a little lump of flesh, some of it shapely and other shapeless. We are rehearsing this, that we may make the reality clear to you. We cause the drop of sperm that we please to remain in the wombs till an appointed time. We bring you forth as infants and nurture you, that you may come of age. Among you is he that dies at a young age, and he who is kept back to the most abject age, so that after once having known, he reaches a stage when he knows nothing. You see the earth dry and barren, and then no sooner than we send down water upon it, it begins to quiver and swell and brings forth every kind of beauteous vegetation. All this is because Allah, He is the truth, and because He resurrects the dead, and because He has the power over everything. All of which shows that the hour shall surely come to pass, in this there is no doubt, and Allah shall surely resurrect those that are in graves. And among people are those that wrangle about Allah without knowledge, without any true guidance, and without any scripture to enlighten them. They wrangle arrogantly, intent on leading people astray from the way of Allah. Such shall suffer disgrace in this world, and we shall cause them to taste the chastisement of burning in the next. That is the outcome of what your own hands have wrought, for Allah never wrongs His creatures. And among people is He who worships Allah on the borderline. If any good befalls Him, He is satisfied. But if a trial afflicts Him, He utterly turns away. He will incur the loss of this world and the hereafter. That indeed is a clear loss. He invokes instead of Allah those who can neither harm nor benefit him. That indeed is straying far away. He invokes those that are more likely to cause him harm than benefit. Such is surely an evil patron and an evil associate. In contrast, Allah will assuredly cause those who believe and act righteously to enter gardens beneath which rivers flow. For most certainly Allah does whatever He pleases. Anyone who fancies that Allah will not support him in this world and in the hereafter, let him reach out to heaven through a rope and then make a hole in the sky and see whether his device can avert that which enrages him. Even so, we have revealed the Qur'an with clear signs. Verily, Allah guides whomsoever He wills. On the day of resurrection, Allah will most certainly judge among those who believe and those who became Jews and Sabians and Christians and Magians and those who associate others with Allah in His divinity. Surely, Allah watches over everything. Have you not seen that all those who are in the heavens and all those who are in the earth prostrate themselves before Allah, and so do the sun and the moon and the stars and the mountains and the trees and the beasts, and so do many human beings and even many of those who are condemned to chastisement. And he whom Allah humiliates, none can give him honor. Allah does whatever He wills. These two groups, the believers and unbelievers, are in dispute about their Lord. As for those that disbelieve, garments of fire have been cut out for them. Boiling water shall be poured down over their heads, causing not only their skins, but all that is in their bellies as well to melt away. There shall be maces of iron to lash them. Whenever they try, in their anguish, to escape from hell, they will be driven back into it and shall be told, Now taste the torment of burning. On the other hand, Allah will cause those who believed and acted righteously to enter the gardens beneath which rivers flow. 
They shall be decked in them with bracelets of gold and pearls, and their raiment shall be of silk. They were guided to accept the pure word. They were guided to the way of the praiseworthy Lord. Indeed, those who disbelieve and who now hinder people from the way of Allah and hinder them from the holy mosque which we have set up as a place of worship for all people, equally for those who dwell therein and for those who come from outside, they surely deserve punishment. Whosoever deviates therein from the right way and acts with iniquity, we shall cause him to taste a painful chastisement. Call to mind when he assigned to Abraham the site of the house, Kaaba, directing him, Do not associate aught with me, and keep my house pure for those who walk around it, and for those who stand, and who bow down, and who prostrate themselves in worship. And publicly proclaim pilgrimage for all mankind, so that they come to you on foot and mounted on lean camels from every distant point, to witness the benefits in store for them, and pronounce the name of Allah during the appointed days over the cattle that He has provided them. So eat of it and feed the distressed and the needy. Thereafter, let them tidy up and fulfill their vows and circumambulate the ancient house. Such was the purpose of building the Kaaba. Whosoever then venerates Allah's sanctities will find it to be good for him in the sight of his Lord. Cattle have been made lawful for you, except those mentioned to you as unlawful. So shun the abomination of idols, and shun all words of falsehood. Become exclusively devoted to Allah, ascribing divinity to none other than Him. Whosoever ascribes divinity to aught beside Allah, it is as though he fell down from the sky, whereafter either the birds will snatch him away, or the wind will sweep him to a distant place, causing him to be shattered to pieces. Such is the fact. And whosoever venerates the sanctity of all that had been ordained as symbols of Allah surely does so because it is part of the true piety of the hearts. You may derive benefit from sacrificial animals until an appointed time. Thereafter, their place of sacrifice is near the ancient house. For every people we have laid down a ritual of sacrifice, although the purpose of the ritual is the same, that they pronounce the name of Allah over the cattle He has provided them. Your Lord is one God, so submit yourselves to Him alone and give, O Prophet, glad tidings to those that humble themselves before Allah, whose hearts shiver whenever Allah is mentioned, who patiently bear whatever affliction comes to them, who establish prayer and who spend for good purposes out of what we have provided them. We have appointed sacrificial camels among the symbols of devotion to Allah. There is much good in them for you. So make them stand at the time of sacrifice and pronounce the name of Allah over them. And when they fall down on their sides after they are slaughtered, eat and also feed them who do not ask and those who ask. Thus have we subjected these animals that you may give thanks. Neither their flesh reaches Allah nor their blood. It is your piety that reaches Him. He has subjected these animals to you that you may magnify Allah for the guidance He has bestowed upon you. Give glad tidings, O Prophet, to those who do good. Surely, Allah defends those who believe. Certainly, Allah has no love for the perfidious, the thankless. Permission to fight has been granted to those, for they have been wronged. Verily, Allah has the power to help them. Those who were unjustly expelled from their homes for no other reason than their saying, Allah is our Lord, if Allah were not to repel some through others, Monasteries and churches and synagogues and mosques wherein the name of Allah is much mentioned would certainly have been pulled down. Allah will most certainly help those who will help Him. Verily, Allah is immensely strong, overwhelmingly mighty. Allah will certainly help those who, were we to bestow authority on them in the land, will establish prayers, render zakah, enjoin good and forbid evil. The end of all matters rests with Allah. O Prophet, if they give the lie to you, then before them the people of Ad and Thamud also give the lie to the prophets. And so too did the people of Abraham and the people of Lot. And so did the dwellers of Midian, and Moses too was branded a liar. Initially, I granted respite to the unbelievers for a while and then seized them. How dreadful was my punishment! How many towns have we destroyed because their people were steeped in iniquity? So they lie fallen down upon their turrets. How many wells lie deserted, and how many towering palaces lie in ruins? 
Have they not journeyed in the land that their hearts might understand and their ears might listen? For indeed, it is not the eyes that are blinded. It is rather the hearts in the breasts that are rendered blind. They ask you to hasten the punishment. Allah shall most certainly not fail His promise. But a day with your Lord is as a thousand years of your reckoning. How many towns did I respite at first, though they were steeped in iniquity, and then I seized them, to me are all destined to return. Say, O Muhammad, O people, I have been sent to you only as a plain warner before the doom strikes you. So those who believe and act righteously shall be granted forgiveness and an honorable sustenance. Whereas those who strive against our signs, seeking to profane them, they are the friends of the fire. Never did we send a messenger or a prophet before you, O Muhammad, but that whenever he had a desire, Satan interfered with that desire. Allah eradicates the interference of Satan and strengthens his signs. Allah is all-knowing, all-wise. He does this in order that he may make the evil caused by Satan a trial for those in whose hearts there is sickness of hypocrisy, whose hearts are hard and vitiated. Surely these wrongdoers have gone too far in their dissension. He does this in order that those endowed with knowledge may know that it is the truth from your Lord and that they may have faith in it and their hearts may humble themselves before Him. Verily, Allah always directs those that believe to the right way. The unbelievers will not cease to be in doubt about it until the hour suddenly comes upon them or the chastisement of an ominous day overtakes them. On that day, all sovereignty shall be Allah's and He will judge among them. Then those who believed and acted righteously shall be in gardens of bliss. A humiliating chastisement awaits those who disbelieved and denied our signs. As for those who migrated in the way of Allah, whereafter they were slain or died, Allah will certainly grant them a goodly provision. Indeed, Allah is the best of all those who provide. He will surely admit them to a resort which will please them. Most certainly, Allah is all-knowing, most forbearing. That indeed is so. As for him who retaliates in proportion to the excess committed against him and is thereafter again subjected to transgression, Allah will surely aid him. Verily, Allah is all-pardoning, all-forgiving. So shall it be, because it is Allah who causes the night to emerge out of the day and causes the day to emerge out of the night, and Allah is all-hearing, all-seeing. So shall it be, because Allah, He is the truth, and all whom they invoke instead of Him are false. Allah is most high, all great. Do you not see that Allah sends down water from the sky, whereby the earth turns green? Verily, Allah is subtle, all aware. To Him belongs all that is in the heavens and all that is in the earth. Surely, Allah, He alone, is self-sufficient, praiseworthy. Have you not seen how Allah has subjected to you all that is in the earth and the vessels that sail in the sea by His command? And it is He who holds back the sky that it may not fall on earth except by His leave? Surely, Allah is most gentle, ever compassionate to people. And it is He who has endowed you with life. And it is He who causes you to die. And it is He who will then resurrect you. Man is indeed extremely prone to denying the truth. For every people we have prescribed a way of worship which they follow. So, O Muhammad, let them not dispute with you concerning this and call them to your Lord, you are certainly on the straight way. And if they dispute with you, say, Allah knows well what you do. Allah will judge among you on the day of resurrection concerning matters about which you disagreed. Are you not aware that Allah knows all that is in the heaven and the earth? Surely, it is all preserved in a book. Indeed, that is easy with Allah. Instead of Allah, they worship those concerning whom He has revealed no sanction, and concerning whom they have no true knowledge, none shall be able to help such evildoers. When our signs are plainly recited to them, you will perceive utter repugnance on their faces, and it all but seems as if they will soon pounce upon those who recite our signs to them. Say, shall I tell you what is worse than that? The fire with which Allah has threatened those who disbelieve. That is truly an evil end. O people, a parable is set forth. Pay heed to it. Those who call upon aught other than Allah shall never be able to create even a fly, even if all of them were to come together to do that, and if the fly were to snatch away anything from them.
they would not be able to recover that from it. Powerless is the supplicant, and powerless is he to whom he supplicates. They have not formed a true estimate of Allah. Indeed, Allah is all-powerful, almighty. Allah chooses messengers from among angels and from among human beings to convey His command. Allah is all-hearing, all-seeing. He knows all that is before them and that which is hidden from them, and it is to Allah that all affairs are returned. Believers, bow down and prostrate yourselves before your Lord and serve your Lord and do good that you may prosper. Strive in the cause of Allah in a manner worthy of that striving. He has chosen you for His task, and He has not laid upon you any hardship in religion. Keep to the faith of your father Abraham. Allah named you Muslims earlier, and even in this book, that the messenger may be a witness over you, and that you may be witnesses over all mankind. So establish prayer, and pay zakah, and hold fast to Allah. He is your protector. What an excellent protector! What an excellent helper!